Baby Dove is more than just gentle. It also helps moisturize baby's delicate skin. Created with no parabens, phthalates, or sulfates. Choose Baby Dove. Sana pang tupis ang budget ko. Kaya mo na to. This video is about COVID-19, the coronavirus that is spreading rapidly across the globe. This is a really serious issue that we all must take action on if we are to try and stop it spreading any further. I will talk about some basic information on it, the symptoms, how it is spread, the disease progression and what we can do to stop it. Please be aware that I do not claim to be the expert on this. The information I'll share with you is what is found online, on official government websites such as the NHS and CDC in America, the BBC News, plus any other information through Wikipedia summaries, which has official scientific peer-reviewed papers to back up these findings. I'll put a, a link to as many as I can see that are relevant, but keep in mind the numbers are changing and the virus can mutate, so when you watch this video, whenever that might be, my information here may no longer be up to date. Please check the official government website and reliable news sources for updated information. So here are the basics. COVID-19 stands for Coronavirus Disease 2019. It was previously known as the uh, Wuhan Coronavirus, as it originated from the city of Wuhan in China, specifically in the Hunan seafood market. The incubation period, which is the time it takes for the symptoms to show after the primary infection, is on average 2 to 14 days. However, there are cases where patients don't show the symptoms until 24 to 27 days later. The symptoms are as listed here. As you can see, they are very much like a common cold or a flu. But make no mistake, it is not like a flu. It is much worse, as you'll see later on as we talk about the disease progression. What makes this worse is that there are many cases where people do not show any symptoms whatsoever, meaning they won't even know that they're already infected. These people will then carry on with their normal daily routine, which then spread the, viruses, uh, spread the virus to whoever they meet. This is why drastic measures, such as large-scale quarantine, need to take place to prevent community spreading from happening. Based on the current statistics, the death rate is around 2-3%. to However, it is likely to increase in the next few days. The death rate is even higher at around 15-20% to for anyone above the age of 18. Compared to the death rate of flu in the States, which is about 0.15%, uh, you can really see the seriousness of COVID-19. On that note, let's look at some statistics. When the virus started uh, spreading initially, it killed many people in China. The total number of deaths in China occurred uh, during that first month exceeded the total number of deaths caused by SARS globally in nine months, which is in uh, 2003. In other words, COVID-19 killed more people in one month in one single country compared to SARS globally in nine months. Now let's look at the numbers in the UK. On the 1st of March, which was last Sunday, there were 35 confirmed cases in the UK. A week later, which was 8th of, uh, 8th of March, there were 273 confirmed cases plus 3 deaths. Today, as I make this video, is Monday 9th of March. As I film this video in the evening, there are 319 confirmed cases plus 5 deaths. 8 of the cases have unknown infection source, sources, which means that the government can trace where these people have contracted the virus from. This means we already have a risk of community spreading, meaning the virus is already circulating among society. You can probably expect the numbers to rise exponentially if that's the case, which is technically what's happening already right now. So why the fuss? A lot of students and even adults I meet say that it's no different to a common cold and that it only kills old people so we don't have to worry. This is utterly wrong. COVID-19 causes permanent and irreversible damage to your respiratory system. So even if you're young, fit and healthy, you won't die from getting the coronavirus, but your lungs won't be as good as they are even after you've recovered. And I'll explain more on the page about the disease progression, and you'll see what I mean by that. 
Another massive problem is that you can become an asymptomatic carrier, meaning you won't get symptoms even after you've got the virus in you. You're going to spread it to your loved ones who may be of old age, with a weakened immune system, or even long-term illness, which means that it will kill them instead of you. So finally onto this page, which will explain so many things as to why I'm stressing so much on the fact that COVID-19 is not a common cold. In a sense, it works like a common cold or influenza, since they are within the same family of viruses. However, you can recover completely from influenza, you will not from COVID-19. Your upper respiratory system gets infected first, which is basically like your nose, right? and you'll get a sniffle, a runny nose, or a sneezing. At this stage, the virus is highly transmissible and highly contagious, as the virus mostly exists in your nose and saliva, meaning they can spread outwards quite easily. However, very quickly, the virus will then travel to your lower respiratory system, which is your trachea and your lungs. From then, the disease progresses extremely quickly. It will cause pneumonia, which is lung inflammation, and your immune system takes a hit. Pneumonia can then lead to pulmonary fibrosis, where your lung tissues get replaced with scar tissues. This is permanent and irreversible, just like how surgical scars take nearly a lifetime to heal, or simply it never does. Fluid accumulation also occurs in the lungs, uh, which is kind of like a response of, it's a immune response, your body's trying to fight the infection. And this is where your alveoli gets flooded with fluid, so reducing your general ability to do gas exchange, leading to a lower oxygen level in your bloodstream. In some cases, due to the rapid widespread inflammation in your lungs and fibrosis, it leads to what we call the acute respiratory distress syndrome, where your entire respiratory system just suddenly fails. Then your body can no longer do gas exchange properly and you collapse on the street as you virtually won't be able to breathe. All of these different things progress ultimately to multi-organ failure and then death soon follows. As I mentioned, all of this happens and progresses very, very quickly. For someone with underlying health problems, this can happen in days. Sometimes it may seem someone's recovering and then next thing you know, it worsens and it takes their lives. So what can we do? There is still some speculation as to how the virus spreads, but mainly these are some uh, confirmed ones. By knowing how the tra virus is transmitted, it will help us understand why NHS is pushing for these procedures. Right, so uh, these are the few key ones. Droplet infection, so for sneezing and coughing. Direct and indirect contact, as the virus can stay alive on even dead surfaces for hours. And fluid transmission, so things like blood, urine and feces. And then, like I said, knowing how it transmitted will help us understand why we do these procedures or precautions. I'm sure you've already heard of this um, from literally everywhere that you are right now, but I'm going to specifically emphasize on particular things here which is not shown or not seemingly spread widely enough. Number one, it's not just about washing your hands or the time it takes, it's about the method. Use soap and warm water when available because the coronavirus is cold resistant but not heat resistant. It will die at higher heat, uh, at higher temperatures. Spend at least 20 to 30 seconds washing the palms and the back of your hands, between your fingers, around your big thumb and your wrists as well. Do this repeatedly, right? Maybe do it two to three times before rinsing it off. After, after rinsing the soap out, dry your hands with tissue paper and then use the same tissue paper to turn the tap off. If you turn the tap off directly after rinsing the soap out, you are transferring any viruses back onto your hands as you previously turned the tap on with the microbes on your hands. I would suggest not to use towels as the viruses can stay on it for a really long time. Number two, wash your hands as frequently as possible before handling food or eating, after seizing, coughing, and obviously after the toilet. Basically, just wash it as frequently as possible. Avoid close contact with people who are ill, or but, but actually simply anyone really, because there are people out there who are infected but not showing symptoms yet. You and them won't actually know until it's too late. Uh, the fourth point, clean the surfaces regularly, for example, door handles. Another massive one is mobile phones, right? We're always using them, we're always on them whenever we have the chance. And we use our hands to work on them, meaning that the phone, along with our hands, are covered in microbes and the coronavirus. So clean them with a cloth or a tissue paper, with uh, slightly damped, maybe with disinfectants, not just water. 
Right, don't soak it obviously in disinfectants or water, it will just damage your phone. So be sensible, just maybe wipe the surfaces as much as you can. If your phone is in a, in a pocket or I meant um, uh, one of those phone covers, take it off and actually wash it properly with uh, disinfectant, bleach or detergent every single day. The last point, which a lot of people don't really uh, do because it's not seemingly that big of a thing, is to close the toilet lids before flushing. Right? The lid over your toilet seat is not for you to just sit on it. It's to prevent your processions from falling in accidentally, but even more so to keep any fluids from the toilet inside the toilet from coming out. Experiments have shown that the concentration of microbes that can fill the air if you flush without closing the lid compared to if the lid was closed and the results are absolutely revolting. The virus can be in your fluids, such as your urine and your feces. So if you flush without closing the lid, the virus will literally be flushed into the air that you're in at that moment and hover in the toilet for some time and cover the surfaces around the toilet, such as the wash basin where you wash your hands, the towels that you hang near your bathtub or shower cubicle. And imagine if you use that towel later on after your shower, you'll be literally wiping pee particles, poo particles and coronavirus onto your own body. I appreciate that this is a lot of information and I'm sure you can find more online, but please, the idea is to take this seriously. As someone who has experienced SARS firsthand in an Asian city, I've seen that the coronavirus in, 20, uh, in 2003 took many lives, including medical professionals, doctors and nurses, people of old age, and also people who are as young as you know the kids in primary schools. COVID-19 is much worse than SARS, as you have seen in the statistics I've already shown you earlier, and I'm sure anything else you see online. I plead that you do not take this lightly, and treat it with utmost caution. Protect yourself and your loved ones. Act now to maintain high standards of hygiene and stop the spread of COVID-19. If I want to